The first shakha ever done outside the land of Bharat Mata was over the Indian Ocean, on board the ship SS Vasna, in September 1946. Two Swayansaviks, Maniklal Rubhani and Jagdish Chandra Sharda identified each other by the Ganavesh shorts. Shakhas were held and new Swayansaviks joined Sangh while still on the ship. They agreed to start Shakha once they reached Kenya, which then became the first permanent international branch of BSS. Dindayal Bhavan, the Karyale of Sangh, in Kenya. Located on Desai Road, in Nairobi. The first ever monument, built in the memory of Pandit, Dindayal, Upadhyay, in the entire world, even Bharat. This is because, Dindayalji had visited Kenya, and made a great impact to send work, and inspired, many Karyakartas. Shortly, after he returned to Bharat, his mysterious murder occurred, on board a train. The Dindayal Bhavan, was built to remember him, and, the inspirational work, done by him, throughout his life. The foundation stone, was laid in 1968, and Shilanyas, was done, by the graceful hands, of Swami Satyamitranand Giri. Then, the construction started. And, in two years, it was complete. It was a beehive of activities in the 60s and 70s. The premises was available to any sanstha, at no charges. Nineteen seventy me second visit of uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee. ठीक है तभी Atal Bihari Vajpayee का हमने एक बुद्धिक रखा था दिन दाल पहुँच में तभी एक सीनियर कार्यकर्ता और ब्रह्म सभा डाइट तो अपनी साथ उनका रिलेशन अच्छा था तो सभी ने सोचा कि हम उन समसान पर जाएंगे उनकी क्रिया के लिए तो अटल जी ने विश जाहिर की कि वो भी अपनी साथ आना चाहते हैं तो अटल जी ऑल्सो एक कम्युनिट और स्वयं से एक टू द क्रेमेटोरियम तो क्रेमेटोरियम में गए ना तो अटल जी ने पूछा व्हाई दे आर टू क्रेमेटोरियम तो स्वयं से ने बताया कि ये पंजाबी का है वो गुजराती का है दो तो अटल जी ने तभी बोला कि अब हम हिंदू लोग मरने के बाद भी एक नहीं हो सकते तो उनके बाद सभी कार्यकर्ता के साथ उन्होंने बैठक की उन्होंने बोला कि नहीं आप ऐसी बॉडी बनाओ जो सभी हिंदू को इकट्ठे करे तो दिद आइडिया वाज गिवन टू अवर कार्यकर्ता बाय माननीय अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी तो दैट वाज द मेन आइडिया सब फिर अटल जी तो चले गए फिर उनके बाद यहाँ के कार्यकर्ता सारे बैठे उन्होंने सोचा क्या करना चाहिए फिर दे कोल्ड सो मेनी लीडर्स फ्रॉम डिफरेंट हिंदी हिंदू इंस्टीट्यूशन हिंदू इंस्टीट्यूशन उनके साथ सलाह मशवरा करने के बाद दे डिसाइडेड टू फॉर्म हिंदू काउंसिल ऑफ केनिया ए कोऑर्डिनेटिंग बॉडी उनके सभी हिंदू संस्था उनके मेम्बर हो गए तो दैट आइडिया वॉज फ्लोटेड एंड सेवेंटी में वो आइडिया फ्लोट हुआ सेवेंटी टू में हिंदू काउंसिल ऑफ किनिया की स्थापना की फाउंडेशन शुरू हुआ तो शुरू में उनके पास पैसा नहीं था तो अपने कार्यकर्ता ने बोला कि हम एक ऑफिस देंगे हिंदू काउंसिल ऑफ किनिया के लिए तो सबकी जानकारी के लिए 25 साल तक विदाउट एनी रेंट वी गेव अवर प्रेमाइस टू बी यूज बाई हिंदू काउंसिल ऑफ किनिया So that was the beginning. Following our old memories of camps, utsos and picnics.
Hideji arrived to Kenya in 1959 for the first time by ship to Mombasa. Then, he went back to India. He later returned in 1972 as he was assigned Kenya as his headquarters. From here he used to then travel to other countries in the world. So Kenya is the foundation of Sangh activities outside India. The Swainsevics from Kenya helped him get a permit to stay in Kenya. The first Prime Minister of Kenya and first President of Kenya, Muse Jomo Kenyatta attended Sangh Shibir in Gatundu.
year 2009, the name up till now, which was Bhartiya Swensevak Sangh, was changed to Hindu Swensevak Sangh. Over the years, Sangh diversified from just Shakha to other branches as follows. HRSC, Seva activities for the Samaj, mainly focusing on Mother Kenya. Activities include school feeding, tree planting, foot prosthetics, wheelchair donations, medical camps, etc. From the year 2022, it will now be renamed as Seva Kenya to be in sync with other Sangh Seva branches in the world. HRSC used to feed more than 20,000 children daily, before the COVID time, when many schools got closed. HRSC plantation survival rate is 85%, which is the highest in the country. Hindu Sevika Samiti, Shakha activities which are aimed at inculcating sanskars in humans who will go out in the Samaj and influence others need not be limited to males. Sisters, wives and mothers of Swain Seviks started taking keen interest in Sangh activities and wanted to have Shakhas of their own too. The International Centre for Cultural Studies was established in Nagpur, India, by a group of academics and volunteers in 1997 who were interested in studying similarities among various cultures. The vision of ICCS, Universal Wellbeing, is based on the age-old Hindu culture's wisdom. ICCS started out as an institute for Indo-African studies based on the founder's exploration of the similarities between African and Hindu traditions. A key objective of the ICCS, during the last two decades of existence, has been, to network globally, with leaders, who share the vision of universal well-being, as well as to cultivate, strong bonds with native, communities of Africa, Australasia, Europe, North America, South America, and Southeast Asia. ICCS has organized, more than 30 conferences in different countries, and has supported, projects and community gatherings, so native and local communities can empower themselves and preserve their cultures and traditions. Sanskrit Bharti work, started in Mombasa and Nairobi, in July 2018, with the first 10 Din, Sambhashana, Shibirs, conducted, by a Sanskrit Bharti Pracharak, Sri Balaji, from U.A.A. Weekly classes are held, in both cities, for both adults and children.
Bal Gokulam is the place where an ordinary cowherd boy blossomed into a divine incarnation. It is here that Krishna's magical days of childhood were spent and his powers came to be recognized. Every child has that spark of divinity within. Bal Gokulam is a forum for children to discover and manifest that divinity. Bal Gokulam will enable Hindu children to appreciate their cultural roots, learn Hindu values in an enjoyable manner and make good friends. They will also develop a sense of seva service to humankind. Activities in Bala Gokulam. Children will have lots of fun while they learn. Activities are planned for their physical, intellectual, social and spiritual development. Weekly activities include games, yoga, stories, bhajan, shlokas and arts and crafts. great years of Sangh achievement in Kenya. A great Shibir was held in Juja in 1987. Sri Yadavrav Ji Joshi attended this Shibir. Many Swayansaviks from abroad also attended including Swayansaviks from UK and Bharat. 
also those who were previously from Kenya but had shifted to other East African countries were also invited which also included a bus of 40 swain sewix from Tanzania thus far the greatest sankhya ever recorded in East Africa in this shibir of over 425 swain sewix uh yes i had the fortune of attending the shibir um i was in my a level at that time my final year of a level so for once i did not join the advance party of the camp in the previous years i'd been going to all the advance parties so i knew what the camp was all about so when i first this was at uh, juja in the jomo kenyatta university when i first entered that uh, sangstan on the first day of the camp i was just taken aback by the atmosphere of that camp i'd been attending maybe four or five uh, shibis before that but this was just something else and uh, to date the memories i have of a sang shibi i would always remember that particular uh, sang shibi in 2014 the un passed a resolution to celebrate 21st june as the international yoga day Sangh took initiative to make this noble cause of yoga and health awareness across the world by facilitating IYD celebrations. Even in Kenya, Sangh did this by uniting all yoga institutions and other Hindu organizations to celebrate a grand event at the Nairobi University in which many government, UN officials graced the event. Over 1500 participants took part in a flawless event which seemed to ooze harmony and peace for the entire day. After the first yoga day, it has since been celebrated every year with some support in the backstage, not only in Nairobi but most major towns and cities of Kenya. institutions through this shobha yatra in 2007 a similar one was held in 1997 in presence of professor rajendra singh ji or rajju bhaiya as he was popularly known as he was the fourth sir sanchalak of rashtriya swayamsevak sangh In the year 2016 there were few changes in the Ganvesh. The new Ganvesh was a black trouser, black shoes, black belt and a white t-shirt with HSS logo.
Here we are at 75 years of HSS Kenya. Keeping the spirit of dharma in our hearts, contributing to our karma bhumi Kenya in many ways. Looking forward for the next 25 years.